Since it seems like nobody else is going to make this video, I may as well be the one to do it. I'll try to keep this one quick so everybody can get back to staring blankly at a screen, jumping from video to video, watching their life pass them by. I'm not weird. You're weird. Ignoring that totally not self call out. The first thing I want to say about this episode of Death Battle is that I actually quite like it. Of course, some important things for both characters were missed here and there, but in essence it presented the more known facts. Obviously it's hard for people to manage all that mass of information, and still have time to make the animations. And honestly, that does deserve some credit. That being said, my issue with this death battle was not the research in of itself, but rather the way points were made and then completely ignored for the actual battle. So listen here to my rant coming from a random guy on the internet with a really cringy profile picture. And I really need to change that one. Saying an opinion that is totally 100% unbiased and factually correct forever. I'll start with the biggest issues I could see and then work my way backwards, since I'm pretty sure I have already lost half of the few viewers this video is going to get to the YouTube recommended page anyways. The Flash's Infinite Mass Punch is an absolute not factor in this fight. Honestly, I am confused as to why it was even mentioned in the post-fight analysis. The reason for me saying that is quite simple, really. For the Flash to hit somebody with the infinite mass punch, he needs to allow the relativistic laws of physics to work on his body and then run just under the speed of light. The issue with that is that it does not matter just how powerful a punch like that could actually be. Because the speed of light is laughably slow for both Wally and Sonic, a punch like that would just never connect. Even if we ignore that and say, they are going faster than light, obviously the punches would become even more powerful. In that case, there would be really nothing stopping Sonic to perform his own quote-unquote infinite mass punch, since all there is to that move is to punch at really high speed. The next problem I would like to point out is how the fight in itself ended. I get that the animation at what happens in it is not really an accurate representation of what would really happen in a fight between two characters, but it still seems like the consensus coming from the death battle team is that Flash would win by traveling back in time to the beginning of the fight. There are just so many things wrong with that idea. The concept that Flash would be able to out time travel, a guy that killed an actual omnipresent god. And I don't mean like the Dragon Ball Z god, where being given the title of god is about as useful as being given the title of janitor of the universe. No, I mean as close to an all powerful god as you could present in a video game. And Sonic snuffed him out like a candle. While he Beating a guy that fought a being that can literally crush multiversal universes in the palm of their hands is just insanely unlikely. Oh, and let's not forget how Sonic's chaos control allows him to control time and space instantly and at will. If you go down the time travel route, you should at least have the decency to show Sonic following Flash into the past, which honestly would have made for an even cooler fight, because he would be undoubtedly able to do that. Not that I think killing 
Sonic in the past would have even won him the fight in the first place, considering how Sonic's anchor to reality itself. Honestly, past the point of Super Sonic, I really don't see a way for Flash to do anything at all, honestly. Sonic is both invincible and immortal, and there is no way the Flash could just wait him out, since contrary to what was said and shown, Sonic transformations don't actually have a time limit. This by the way includes Hypersonic, which was just completely dismissed in this battle altogether, and even though it is only present in the games, Archie Sonic should have absolutely no issue transforming into Hyper whatsoever. The panel that was shown to somewhat prove their point that Archie Sonic's super form would have a time limit was depicting the games. It was depicting the story of Sonic Unleashed. And even though it was changed for the comic itself, it was still depicting the games. Which in itself would still disprove that arbitrary 60 second time limit Death Battle has so vehemently put on every Sonic fight there was. When we come to Ultra Sonic, it is just even more cut and dry. At the end of the day, Wally and by extension most other Flashes are just human. Empowered and speedy humans, but humans nonetheless. They need air, food, rest, and most importantly, ground to run on. Wally can't fly, he needs a solid surface to run on. This is the exact way the Flash has in fact been defeated before. Yet, that fact was somehow completely ignored in this fight. Archie Sonic doesn't have the same issues. If not the ground, then how about the more direct approach? Ultra Sonic being able to control energy does not magically exclude the energy of the Speed Force. Even if I take your word that Ultra would not be able to affect Wall directly, which honestly to me seems like such an over-exaggeration of what his molecule vibration actually allows him to do, then there is still nothing stopping Sonic from just cutting off that connection while he has to the speed force and preventing its energy from reaching him. Another issue I see is how despite showing and talking about how our resident Sonic Man here can move and stop time and bend reality and space-time just by running, Dev Battle does not bother to explain what ramifications a feat like that actually has. If Sonic is able to move despite the passage of time being zero, then that means that his speed has to be infinite. I repeat, Archie Sonic has infinite speed. That point it doesn't even matter if the Flash can steal speed or not. These were in general my biggest issues I had with this fight. Though I still enjoyed it. There were a couple more minor inaccuracies with the uh, information presented. But I don't want to rent even more than I already have. Of course, here I have mainly talked about how Sonic was misrepresented. Though I am sure Flash also had feats that were just completely ignored. In fact, I know for a fact that was the case. Because I myself know more than was presented in this video. However, if anything, my main stance in this matter is that Archie Sonic would simply win against the Flash more often than not. That being said, I do hope I did not enrage anybody too much by my points. If anybody's interested, I may just follow this video up with a more detailed one, showing how powerful each respective version of Sonic actually is. Have a great day. Signing off.